hello and welcome back to my channel so you guys i bring you another interesting video from amy chen you guys this is a collection of different types of videos so we're gonna play this game today just for today guys i'm gonna play like um the people leaving these comments on her videos and she's gonna be responding to me let's just play a uh, pretense guys yeah so i'm gonna be the troll writing to her these types of uh, comments and then i'll be so I'll, what i'll do is i'll read the comments as a troll pretense and i'll play her video responding to these uh you know messages so yeah just to you know put you in the clear picture so that you understand what is going on it's just pretense guys so whatever comments you have to say on this uh, you know i'm gonna take them but i know that in reality they're not directed at me okay so let's just go ahead with the first comment that i'm writing to dr amy chen guys so okay when the lens you see the world through is filtered by color you will never escape colorism amy we can escape colorism by not engaging in colorism and we can escape racism by not engaging in racism this is a very weird way to say that you require blindness in order to treat people who are different from you as human beings deserving of empathy because you are not capable of viewing a person for who they are and treating them well you can only treat a person well if you view them through the same monochromatic lens that you view yourself because if you acknowledge differences you can only perceive them through the lens of the isms that marginalize but put simply a person who is not racist is capable of seeing and appreciating people of other races here goes another one and i just don't think the way forward is to keep lumping everyone in groups that's how we got here in the first place amy we did not get here by engaging in honest reflection about how historical harms have shaped current systems of injustice that are upheld through racism and ignorance how we got here in the first place is racism stealing genocide and chattel slavery and you're the one who's lumping everyone into groups. In the words of Portia Noir, if it doesn't apply, let it fly. But the reason you're not able to let it fly is because you feel personally implicated by my content and that makes you feel uncomfortable. And rather than examine that discomfort because it would mean acknowledging that on some level you are aware of the fact that you're part of the problem, you tell yourself that you're not the problem, therefore I must be the problem and the problem is that I'm talking about all white people. But I'm not talking about all white people, I'm talking about white supremacy. So please reflect on why you are not able to distinguish between your self and white supremacy but do do not drag all white people down to your level of willful ignorance because there are many white people who are committed to learning about the problems and becoming part of the solution and they do not deserve to be lumped by you into your group so here goes another one racists are incapable of debating that's how that that's why she's alone and behind a screen hiding what are you gonna say about that amy my voice, my face, my name, my home, my profession, my geographic region, and my friends have all appeared in my videos because I am not afraid of actual cowards like yourself. And as for you calling me the most vile, horrible, racist thing on the internet, I will proudly own that title all day, every day. I will proudly be the representation of everything that you fear and cannot stand because it is the day that somebody like you supports and agrees with me that I'll really worry about where I went wrong. Here's another one. Here's another one systematic racism does not exist there is no government sanctioned racist policy let me read that again systematic racism does not exist there is no government sanctioned racist policy a minority is more likely to succeed today than a white person so what are you gonna say about that amy just because there is no longer legal support for systemic racism doesn't mean that the harms caused by systemic racism cease to exist. Especially where no measures were ever taken to redress those harms, they often perpetuate themselves through institutional racism. Redlining is a really good example. Redlining is no longer legal, but because of the harm that it caused in terms of resource gap and segregation, those harms are often perpetuated in institutional racism of financial and real estate practices and are enforced by how we collect property taxes and distribute public resources. School integration is an example of a measure that was taken to redress a harm caused by systemic racism, but because those measures have not been monitored and maintained, there are many school districts in the United States that have resegregated, and that has contributed to the many areas in the United States where the demographic distribution has reverted to looking like it did when redlining was legal, thus causing all of the harm that it did when redlining was legal. 
This comment is also an example of why I ask that people specify Black, Brown, Indigenous, and other people of color, because all of those groups have experienced systemic racism, but in drastically different ways, and grouping us all together as minorities gaslights our different experiences. With respect to Native American identity, sovereignty, and treaty rights, this comment is inaccurate. With respect to Black Americans, if reparations had been paid when they were due, and if Jim Crow had never happened, maybe just now, 160 years after the Civil War, we could begin to have this conversation. But after 500 years of systemic racism and less than 60 years of legal equality, during which very little was done to undo the harm caused by the 500 years of systemic racism, this comment is gaslighting. Which leads me to ask, who are the minorities that you feel have a higher chance of success in the United States than white people? My guess is you would say Asian Americans, and that glosses over the fact that many Asian Americans in the United States now are not themselves or descendants of the Asian Americans who experience systemic racism. Uh, okay, here goes another one. This one is even calling our Amy a racist. So let's just pretend that I'm the troll writing this to Amy. I'm the delusional one. Okay, here goes. Racist at it again with a white inflict on others. She is in a racist mode. I also pick up an awful lot of white envy. What are you going to say about that, Amy? Fortunately, anyone can tap on the comment and it will link them back to the original video where we can all witness how deceitfully you've taken my words out of context, which is completely on brand for every interaction that I've ever had the misfortune of having with you. But while I have your attention, I'd like to ask you some questions that you've been evasive about. Is this the level of irresponsibility and dishonesty that you teach your students to have when they're quoting a source? You know, the students at the university where you have them study all of my videos and everybody at the university calls me the most racist person on social media? And why, after I asked you, can you not disclose the university's name because you fear violent backlash, did you delete all of the comments about it? Is it because you were being as dishonest about that as you're being about this? And now that I'm picking up on the pattern of malicious dishonesty, before you claim that you never made any such comments, remember that screen grabs are a thing. Okay, here goes another one. That's not a, dis that's not a distinction that most regular people of any race will ever accept, I am afraid. So what are you gonna say about that, Amy? Please recognize that people do easily accept changing concepts with respect to race and racism when it benefits them. If that wasn't the case, then chattel slavery would have never happened. And we raise the objection that people can't change their ideas about race and racism because they're so inherent when the proposed changes threaten the benefits. But white people became white people in the 1400s when they were presented with a new concept of race that was commissioned by the Portuguese to justify chattel slavery. And what should have happened is everybody should have said, this is insane, nobody agree to it. Yes, we have categorized one another on the basis of geography and phenotype and culture. We each have opinions that our culture is the best. We've subjugated one another on the basis of culture and ethnicity, warfare, tribalism, imperialism, expansionism, religion, philosophy. But this new concept of race that is being proposed that says certain people are born with traits that make them inferior and other people are born with traits that make them superior and this is going to justify human beings treating human beings as property is completely insane plus you just paid some guy to make that up nobody accept it unfortunately the proposed superior people said that sounds pretty good to me they signed on to it and didn't raise any objections until it started harming their financial welfare now I already hear people saying, see, she's blaming white people for the decisions of our ancestors that we have no control over. I didn't ask to be born white. And it is true that you have no control over the fact that your ancestors accepted whiteness for you. But the awesome thing about this is you do have the ability to learn about and adapt to the power plus racial prejudice definition of racism. And the reason why that change is wanted is because it eases communication and brings clarity to issues that will help us undo the harms that the historical concepts of race and racism have done. And it's awesome that we each have the ability to engage in this transformational change and it is so simple and it costs us nothing. So basically if you don't want to, you are saying that you like benefiting from white supremacy and you want to be left in peace to do it. But collectively, if we are able to adopt words like fluffernutter and MacGyver and cakeage into our dictionary, I believe in us, we can do this. 
okay so that's the rest of the videos guys please let me know how i did this in the comment section below be remember we're just playing a game you know just to help this um, keep it more lively because those that were just our uh, comments left on her videos and she had to respond to those videos yeah guys so please let me know what you think about this video in the comment section below and if you have not subscribed to this channel please guys subscribe to this channel and make sure you watch all the ads that's how i get my coins guys that that helps me you know it encourages me to make more content like this one yeah for my channel for you guys you know yeah so please subscribe turn on the notification bell and i'll definitely see you in my next video bye